Welcome everyone to the very latest edition of Match Day Minus One. It is presented by PointBet, uh, the founding partner of Austin FC. We are coming to you live on uh, Facebook, on Twitter. There'll be a recorded version of this available a little later on tonight on YouTube. And we are reunited. <laughs> Adrian Healy, Michael Lahoon. Michael had to get up really early this morning just to yeah. be here, Michael. I, I appreciate it. I've, I've missed you, man. I, I miss you, too. I feel like it's been too long. It we're has never been. This, we're never this long without no. being here in the booth, so it's good to be back. Well, you know, we have to give our, our national team uh, brethren uh, the odd game. They love coming here and yeah. covering games, as they did last week for Minnesota. Uh, we're back to cover the DC United game tomorrow. Let's talk, first of all, though, about the win last week in what we call the Fortress, and I think that that word is becoming more and more appropriate when we when we talk about Q2 Stadium, Michael. But this was a different sort of win, wasn't it? I talked about this yesterday a little bit on the Twitter Spaces show, and I think I think the coaching staff and players recognise mm. it. It was important for them to get this sort of win at home, a, gr a, a gutted out, a grinded out win, where it's not particularly pretty, but you still get the three points. Well, these are the character-building performances yeah. where you, you don't have to play your best soccer. And you, you gain confidence with that when you know you can get results, grinding it out, or get results when you're playing at your best. The best teams in Major League Soccer, they find ways to win. That's what I saw from this Austin FC team that played against Minnesota United. Players stepped up, and it's being efficient with your chances. No other player being as efficient as Maxi Ruti right now in the last oh, two weeks. He's 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 in that groove. Mm. I was calling it for a few weeks. So he's like, this is the week, he's gonna do it. <laughs> Eventually I knew he was gonna be right, and now he scored two in a row. I think he's gonna make it three in a row, by the way. Uh, we'll come to that in DC. But 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 just just to tie this up, the Minnesota United game, I you know, it's the sort of it's the sort of victory they haven't produced up to this point. Mm. And now they have one. You think about the the home wins up to this point. They've all been, you know, they've all been swashbuckling, high scoring affairs, including the two wins this week. But even go back to last year, the Portland win, yeah. goals flew in in those home wins. So when they were good, they were really good at home. It was finding a way to win when they weren't so good. And now they've they've got that. And, and kudos to the depth. We've talked a lot about the depth of this team, but yeah. kudos to the subs that came in. I thought they changed the game tremendously. A one. Johan Valencia, his presence in the middle of the park, freed more midfield runners to get up higher in the field. Numbers in the box was something in the first half we didn't see enough of from the Verde and Black. In the second half, at times they had five, six towards the end of the game yeah. trying to get that second goal. But they did what they needed to do to get the result, and that's what matters most. Yeah, seven, one, and one now in the last nine games at Q2 Stadium, dating back to you know last, last summer. Uh, the goals... And the wind's really flowing. Uh, you know, what has made the difference? I think um, some of it is obvious. Some of it, not so much. The sort of X factor mm. behind the scenes. John Gallagher, I had him on ATX FC Spaces yesterday without you, Michael. I'm not sure how we, how we did a show without you, but we just pulled through. But, but Gallagher was mentioning, you know, the, the experienced players that we've, we've brought mm. into the club. And, and you know, even if it doesn't always show on the field uh, with the likes of even someone like Felipe. What he's what he's bringing behind the scenes, and Ethan Finley and and Ruben and and, and Maxi. That's a lot of experience that, and, and maturity was the word he used that's been brought to the team. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw another word in there: culture. Yeah, Felipe. Yeah. When we saw him in preseason, we saw the culture that he's brought, and he's been on some very successful team, the Red Bull team that we had talked about early in the season. Him, Sasha Kleshin, Dax McCarthy. What you do when you bring a winner into yeah. your team, it becomes infectious. Younger players begin to buy in more, and really it's like having another coach on the field in yeah. the locker room. Yeah. All right. Enough of last week. We're, we're pointing forward to, uh, to Saturday. Another road trip. Big one. Big one for Austin. First ever East Coast trip. For Austin FC. Some people tried to claim the Nashville trip last year yeah. was an East Coast trip. No, They're no, in the central time zone. How can that be an East no, Coast trip? I know no, they no. were in the Eastern Conference last year. I'll give you what, what constitutes an East Coast game. It has to be east of the Appalachian Mountains. Right. That is East Coast. <laughs> so, the enemy. What's to look forward to on Saturday night? D.C. United. First ever meeting between these two. Uh, actually, first Western Conference uh, team that D.C. United have played this year mm. too they um 
They're an interesting team, Michael. Very, very hard to kind of pin down as to what they actually are. So I want to get your thoughts on on who they are and what they do well. Just the numbers, first of all, two wins and three defeats for them so far this season. So they're in the lower third of these two conferences. But they have played less games. And that's another factor coming into this game. The fact that they've, they've barely played. They've only played one game in four weeks. So what do Austin have to worry about tomorrow with, with DC, particularly for you? Uh, there's a bit of chaos yeah. with this DC team, unpredictability, and they, they play with a back five, which Austin FC at, at times have struggled against a back five. Yeah. And this is a different Austin FC team. We say it week in and week out, some of the lessons learned from the 2021 inaugural season. But DC United, you look to see them play a lot of vertical balls. They play with two strikers up top who can hold the ball up, play with their back to goal, and runners out of midfield. That is difficult to track if you're a center midfielder. So look for Austin FC to really manage moments mm. in this game. Being on the road to be effective, you have to, ma have to manage the highs and the lows and the lulls in games. They're not the most dynamic team. I think that's that's fair to say, but they, they are gritty. They are competitive. Uh, and they have a lot of the same factors we just talked about that Austin have brought in this offseason. A lot of maturity and a lot of MLS experience, the likes of... Steve Birnbaum at the back, still one of the best <laughs> centre backs in the league, isn't he? And a threat at the other end. I know they'll be keeping a careful eye on Birnbaum. Uh, and y y just in the back line, Julian Gressel, yeah. Brad Smith. Yeah, coming from Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, that's, a good it's a good pickup for him. Yeah. A guy who has been successful, MLS Cup winner with the Sounders, and brings that veteran experience. Yeah. Ola Kamara is is another name they'll be facing tomorrow. <laughs> and a couple of guys on our squad know him very well. Josh Wolf, of course, uh, coached Ola Kamara last two years uh, with uh, the Columbus crew. And um, there's, there's a certain Ruben Gabrielson who'll be very familiar uh. with Ola Kamara, too. <laughs> yeah, well, you say Norway, you say those two, and yep. the national team, national team teammates at one point. And talking with Ruben before the team leaves, I said, so you're going to play against Ola. What are your thoughts? He goes, oh, I'm going to smash him. I'm going to smash him. <laughs> so it's that's a battle to watch throughout the 90 minutes. And he said, I mean, actually, we'll hear from uh, Ruben Gabrielson on our pregame show before the game tomorrow. We asked him specifically about Kamara. But Kamara did play a big part in Gabrielson coming to MLS. He was the first call he made. He had the, the, his Norwegian national teammate. Uh, why wouldn't you pick up the phone and ask his advice? Well, you see that so yeah. oftentimes is players talk. It's a real small world. And to have an ambassador for MLS like Ola Kamara, thank you very much. Yeah, Because yeah. we'll take Ruben any day of the week. And Ruben's coming off a, a commanding display, one that I think has been coming for weeks. He's settling in to the league. He's settling in to life in Austin, yeah. most importantly, and it showed. Yeah. Final thought on, on, on DC United. They are, you know, they're a historic team. They're one of the yeah. MLS originals. So much history with the team. I think, they, you know, they're trying to write a new chapter, as they have done since they moved to Audi Field. Audi Field's a, a, a great stadium, and, you know, we're going to have 300 traveling Austin fans who will... Uh, who will sample Audi Field, Michael. Uh, but it, yeah, it's similar size to Q2. Um, but perhaps that's where the similarities <laughs> end. Somehow yeah. it costs twice as much to build that stadium in, in D.C. than ours did here at Austin. I wonder why that is. But uh, but it's interesting. We, you know, Austin are the new breed. Mm. D.C. are the historic. You know, they have the history. And we come in, come in as the new kids trying to write our own history. And the big difference between these two teams, we used the F word, fortress. Yes. Not that F word, the yeah. real F word. <laughs> Audi Field has not been a fortress in the last couple of weeks. DC United coming off a 90-minute stoppage time loss yeah. at home to Atlanta United. The last two games, or three, two out of the last three they've played have been at home, and they haven't taken care of business at home, so they're vulnerable yeah. right now at Audi Field. Austin FC and Austin FC fans, you will like your chances going to the East Coast and going to the nation's capital to try and get a result. Yeah, coming off uh, three straight defeats, as you say, Michael. Uh, so that leads us very nicely to the Lahoud mood, which is what we always look forward to every week. I, I will suggest the Lahoud mood is, is rather weary today, but that's only because <laughs> of the time you had to get up uh, oh. and, and fly here. More on that in, in, in a minute. But but other than uh, a slight sense of weariness, what, what's the Lahoud mood heading into this Audi field encounter? Well, Mr. H, I was weary, but Lahoud mood has shifted to calm. Ooh, there is an air like. of calmness yep. around the mood because of what I saw at training the focus and the team is calm and for the team to remain calm 
beyond just touching down at Dulles International Airport. They will need to do will do two things. Matching DC United's intensity. DC mm. United are a team that come out of the gates. They will try to outwork you. And in games they've been successful, they do that against their opponents. And in the middle of the park, second balls are key. When you're mm. playing against a team that likes to play flighted in long balls to mm. their attackers and be direct, the second balls and winning the knockdowns are going to be paramount. And if Austin FC wants to win this game, the defensive midfield core need to be alert and active on second balls. Yeah, they 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 pose many physical problems, don't they DC United? So it's it's going to be a battle for Austin. Um let's have a look at the odds, which will probably give us uh, a a good sense of how uh, this game is viewed through a national filter. Uh, the odds makers, you know, they they don't always have all the information. I always say MLS odds are a, are an untapped source of income out there, folks, because these MLS odds makers don't always have all the information at the fingertips. Not the same way as they do when they set Premier League odds or Champions League odds. Mm -hmm. So the, the odds are this. Uh, DC United plus 100 at home. That's basically their even money. So they're, they're strong yeah. favorites to win. For Austin, you fancy them to win? You can get plus 250. That's our points bet uh, on point odds for Austin to win. And the draw, plus 275. Um mm. You know, odds makers are always going to favor the home team in this league. Uh, I, I, to me, those are generous odds for, for, for Austin to go there and win. Uh, I, I would like to up the ante with some yeah. of those odds. I'd like to see what the odds are on the one Maxi Ruti continuing Ooh, his hot okay. streak because I would pay good money for that. I would put my money towards that happening. And I'd also like to see the odds on Austin FC keeping a shutout against yeah. this DC United team, a team that doesn't really get a lot of shots on target. But you like the numbers in this one to be favorable towards Austin in terms of getting more bang for your buck. Yeah. Two shutouts in the row? That would be something. Mm. I mean, it was a good, it was a great shutout against Minnesota United last week. To go on the road and get one, that would be, that be, would be a big step, wouldn't oh, it? Be, it'd be special. Well, the Lahoud mood would <laughs> continue in the right direction, even more positive direction, to a ecstatic. Is this the week where this long stretch without a road win finally comes to a conclusion? Let's face it, Michael. They should have won last time out against San Jose on the road. Yeah, yeah a sloppy final 20, 30 minutes really cost them in that one. Even in Portland, the other road game so far this season, unlucky to come away with a defeat. So now can they, can they just transfer those nearlies mm. into definitive end products is the question. I think each time they come back home, and yeah. react and get a response at home, it gives you the confidence to go and try again. Yeah. If you're not getting results at home, then it puts more pressure on getting results on the road. This Austin FC team is resilient. They're yeah. showing resilience that we didn't see consistently last year, and that's because that's what you typically get from expansion teams. But version 2.0, it's been a solid start so far. Yeah, and talking to John Gallagher on uh, ATX FC spaces yesterday. He says it's 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 subject number one that the players are talking about. How do we? I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that that was his word. He used ridiculous mm -hmm. that we we've gone this long without actually getting the full three points on the road. And yes, he says it is way more difficult to win on the road in this league than than any other. And he's experienced trying to do that in Scotland. Yeah, I I, I remember it as a player. Yeah. Of winning on the road the best teams in major league soccer what they do well is not just win on the road they find ways to get points yep. on the road i think really that is going to be the focus for this austin fc team getting points at home making q2 stadium a fortress that's happening and it's happening not just from the 11 or the 18 on the overall game day roster but because of the 12th man yeah. the fans yeah they they do everything in their power to will the team forward but now if you can start getting points on the road you start building and turning draws into wins yeah on the road and those are what playoff teams do and if you become a playoff team then yeah. the fun really begins yeah you yeah. start thinking about trophy well they will be roared on by 300 plus fans uh, wearing the verde and black Tr tremendous effort as always uh, from the austin fan base who are, who are going to be there on mass and making a lot of noise at audi field uh, let's move on 
uh, for now and, and talk about the young guns, Michael. And this is some of the reason for Mr. LaHood's weariness. He, he woke up this morning in Dallas <laughs> uh, and, and looked to get out of there as quickly as possible. But you, oh, yeah. you, you had been there for good reason, covering the Generation Adidas Cup. And, and a shout out to uh, the Austin FC Academy teams, first of all, for what they did uh, early on in that tournament. The U-17s, a big victory against Celtic. The U-15s against uh, Santos Laguna. They've been uh, making their presence felt up there. And it was, I felt, one, it's such an honor to be a part of that. I'm a big believer in young people and young soccer players. I used to be one and really felt how fortunate I was to have someone mentor me yep. and give me an opportunity to become a professional soccer player, to see the evolution of the academy system. I'm in awe of it. We get to see it here at St. David's of what the academy team is doing. We get to really see the results that they've had, but to be a part of the GA Cup was special. And to hear Austin FC's academy team be yeah. the talk of the town, Yeah. to open up, to hear the names of a Micah Burton, yeah. who's a youth national team player and a star in the making, to hear coaches, to hear other clubs talking about Austin FC gave a sense of pride. Yeah, and not now we can say not just Micah Burton in terms of the national team call-ups. Irvin Torres at the U15 level called up. Brian Ariano at the U19 level. So now yeah. three players from the Austin Academy already being recognized at, at national team level. Well, it's not just happening with the first team. The first team is setting the tone in Major League Soccer, and now the Academy team is raising the standard and raising the bar for excellence for this club at the youth level. I'm so happy for these young players to be getting yep. recognized with the U.S. youth national teams. And now it's can we progress and bring an academy player? We have Owen mm. Wolf with yep. the first team. Who is going to be the next yes. youth academy the player? The race is on. I mean, to be with the first team. There's some players there waiting to be, waiting uh, to be chom signed. Chomping at the bit. And, yeah, that's, yeah. And, and really, you're playing for an opportunity. What I see with the GA Cup, it's an opportunity to progress. If you're with the 15s, you have an opportunity to now be seen and progress to the 17s. If you're with the 17s, can you be that next player to sign yeah. that deal with the first team? Did you have fun up there that week, last uh, week? Calling those games. You called a lot of games. Yeah. <laughs> back to back. Two I'm glad. Four well, I've been, been sipping out. You taught me this. Sipping out a lot of tea and honey. <laughs> I think at one point See, I just I just guzzled some honey before a match. So <laughs> the, the ins and outs. We should do, totally do a segment on the ins and outs of broadcast. The art of broadcasting yeah. by one Mr. Adrian Healy. Uh, well, um, but MLSsoccer.com did a, did a great job with you on board as well. David Gass calling, calling yeah. the game. So it, you, you churned out a lot of games up there. But uh, <laughs> it's good to have you back, my friend. Because uh, we we got, a, we got a good game to call tomorrow. Uh, I'm I'm really excited for uh, for this trip to DC. Uh, let's let's have a quick moment of gratitude um, and talk about the the ATX uh, Foundation, our Austin FC mm. community impact team, who always do so much tremendous work uh, in and around the the Austin community. In fact, they went outside of the Austin community this week and opened up um, a a mini pitch. At Bastrop Middle School, uh, this is the fourth mini pitch the ATX FC team have been a part of putting together. First one outside of the city, Austin, and the wonderful town of Bastrop. Just 30, always a great day trip. Love, love, love going out there. But yep. now they've got a five-on-five -five mini pitch out there at Bastrop Middle School. Well, I want to issue a call to action yep. for us, and also share that with you. Would love to go and play. Yes. Out of that field. Oh, we should. Maybe even Absolutely. match A minus one show yeah. there. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. But just, I think I love that. It's one thing to talk about being a team of the community. It's another thing to show it and just feel really fortunate to be a part of a club that lives it. You are on. We're going to do that, you know. Day trip to Bastrop. Go play at the mini pitch at the middle school. Yeah. Enjoy meeting some folks out there and then go. There's a really good coffee shop in Bastrop as well, Ooh. which you will have earned by the time uh, <laughs> we've run each other ragged on that on that, on that that mini well, pitch out there. For those of you who have not seen the media game footage that we had at the end of the <laughs> please year. Please don't look at it. No, 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 no. Please do. Well, please don't. For my sake, please don't. Because you'd never know that I was a former professional footballer from how a one Mr. Adrian oh, Healy no. tackled me in the middle of the park. I I remember it, and I remember uh, Sam. I said, think Sam said, you used to play football? 
<laughs> you want you wound back the clock there. Mr. I Lee. I think it was a half tackle, and then you <laughs> and then you dinked it away from me. Just when I thought I'd won the tackle, I hadn't. But uh, but no, good stuff. Thanks thanks again for the all the great work the Four ATX Foundation do out there, and also a word to our, our partners, St. David's Healthcare. Uh, St. David's Foundation, the U.S. Soccer Foundation, and Soccer Assist. And also for the Butler Brothers, who uh, actually designed uh, the facility for free as well. So Mm. thanks to all of those. Such a big, big part they're playing uh, in the community. Um, And that's just about it for today. Final thoughts uh, on on heading into the weekend, DC United. Uh, We will be calling the game on the CW this week. We're back on the CW and looking forward to another action-packed pregame show. We start at 6 p.m. Michael, me, you, Sonny Guadarrama, Roger Valdivieso. We get to break it all down for half an hour, which which is always so much fun. Yeah, it feels good to be back yeah. first and foremost, and it'll feel even better to be back in the booth with yep. you and the rest of the team. And what's going to just cap it off is three points. Yeah. That's really going to make it It's special. time, isn't it? It's yeah. time the team brought home three points. To bring it home from the nation's capital would be uh, would be very appropriate, I believe. I couldn't agree more. So hopefully we will see you tomorrow for our coverage. 6 p.m. for the pregame show on the CW. Kickoff from Audi Field at 6.30. We will talk to you then. Thanks for being with us.